Welcome to the No Budget Indie Filmcast, where we dip into the independent film universe to highlight those little films that you might not have heard about elsewhere. Will you agree with our panel, or will our panel agree with each other? Tune in to find out. I am Milo Dennison, and with me, as always, is Claire Milan. Hello. I shouldn't say as always, though, because we were missing Carl last week. So. Oh, we were, actually. Yeah, Carl so, was yeah. away <laughs> last week. So with me, as always, is Claire Milan, and with us sometimes is Carl for me. Well, actually, you know, we did this early on in the show, didn't we? We, we, we oh, everything true. Parasite. So really, I'm the oh. only consistent one here. Actually, yeah, yeah, I was missing for one or two of them. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, Claire, uh, what are we watching this week? So this week we're watching a film called Feeling Through. It's a short film that was nominated for an Oscar uh, this year, along with uh, Two Distant Strangers, which is a previous film that we reviewed. Mm -hmm. And so Two Distant Strangers won won in the category, and this this it was up against this film. It's uh, written and directed by a guy called Doug Rowland, and it stars two actors called um, Stephen... Uh, uh, Prescott and Robert Tarango. So it's set over one night and it centers around um, two men and one of them is, is a guy called Tariq and he's homeless but he's kind of ashamed to be homeless and he doesn't really like he's trying to find somewhere to stay for the night so he, he's texting two of his friends and he doesn't really want to reveal he's homeless and uh, then he encounters this man uh, on the street and he discovers that the man is deaf blind, so he can, has no sight and uh, no hearing. The, the deaf blind guy, uh, Artie, um, he actually writes and says he needs to get, he needs to get home. And uh, so then uh, Tariq helps him. And over the over an hour or so in trying to get the bus, they kind of develop a kind of um, a connection. For me, it was really beautiful very moving and uh, the the Doug Rowland the writer director he did a lot of research into um into the deaf blind community and he contacted a center and they helped him cast it and they came across um the actor uh, Robert Tarango he's uh, he's apparently this they, they say that he's the first deaf blind actor to play a deaf blind character it's based on a true story um the director Doug he actually came across a guy who was deaf blind and the same thing happened to him. He wrote on the palm of his hand, tried to communicate with this deaf blind guy and he went back and found him again. And that was inspiration for this story. Yeah, I think it was really moving, very beautiful. And you can see why it was nominated for an Oscar. Yeah, you can see why it was nominated for an Oscar. Uh, it was funny that you mentioned the what, was the, what was the other one? Two Distant Strangers? Two Strangers? Yes, Two, Two Distant Strangers. Yeah, which is... Uh, a black guy and a white cop uh, going on about like, you know, racial violence in the country and uh, has those checks. Now we have uh, a black guy who's homeless with a white guy who's deaf and blind. So I know I'm, I'm going to get ridiculed for this, but it's total Oscar bait film. And mm -hmm. saying that, I'm not saying that the director made this as an Oscar bait film, just to be clear. I think from because I watched the documentary as well he had all, very altruistic intentions with making this it which does make it a good you know story in that sense that he actually had this encounter with this person and is like this is a unique experience has this story been told no I want to tell this story and the fact that he went out of his way to work with the Helen Keller Center and you know and find somebody who actually is uh deaf and blind and it was really nice versus just casting an actor who who played the played it uh w w was really nice as, as well so um uh, yeah, it's quite interesting cause, it, yeah because the actor is actually he's not a hundred percent i was trying to figure out for you know, ages because yeah. mm -hmm. how would they like they'd have extra trouble if he was it'd be very difficult to communicate with someone who's completely blind and completely deaf um, but he's he has a certain amount of eyesight, this actor. Yeah. So he, and he he's never used the technique of drawing on on his, his hands or to communicate. So he yeah. learned that, and it shows it in the documentary so well. It's it's pretty fascinating. I, I wonder if the hashtag police have gone after him for not casting a fully one hundred percent blind person in this role of playing a partially blind, uh, you know, blind with a partially blind person. The, well. uh, 
they need to get mad about that. I I, I didn't see the documentary. I'll probably give it a watch after, which which makes me feel a little bit guilty for what I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, um, I, like I had kind of a knee jerk reaction to this in a way. I just thought, okay, this is just such a typical Hollywood type Oscar bait type film. Uh, lashings of sentimentality, uh, you know, a, a, a dollop of personal growth and a feel good ending, and which isn't giving anything away because the logline says it changes his life forever. I, and I have to take issue with that because we don't know that it changes his life forever. Mm. That's not shown in the film, it's just supposition, hypothetical. Um, but yeah, like it is, it is, you know, a very nice film. I, I would have preferred if, obviously, based on what you guys are saying, and this is something that happened to this guy any minute, that fine person, but it would have been more interesting if we hit it something that more focused on his life. Because this seemed to be about the young guy and how it, how it affected him, you know, how the interaction affected him. Um, and it was almost like he it was saying, oh, you know, he was feeling down on his look and until he, until he met somebody who was worse off than he was in a way, that it, it sort of gave him a new energy, you know, which, which is like, I thought that wasn't, you know, has been unfair in a way. Um, but like, like the, you know, that's that saying where he kind of takes out the, takes his book out of the rucksack and he's looking through it and he's reading some of the comments and, uh, I just thought, like, guy, you know, he this guy has a really interesting life story, you know. Um, that that would probably be something that would be more interesting. To depict. We're saying it should be turned into a series. Do you know, I also like become the comments underneath because it would make a very good series, wouldn't it? Or even a longer film. Um, a series following the blind guy. Yeah, it would find the blind guy and even their relationship. It, or, or just to following both of them. It could be an interesting, uh, yeah, premise. And it, it's, but it is, it is a, on the surface, it looks very simple. Like over one night, two, two guys and one of them is deaf blind and one of them is homeless. Um, but I think it's so well done and it's very layered. And I think, I know what you mean, Carl, they, they, maybe they, they could have focused on deaf blind guy. He's a fascinating story, but they chose to focus more on the homeless guy and his arc and his change. You know, um, but yeah, it makes you think as well. How do deaf blind people like that's really dangerous to be if you're deaf and blind and you're standing in the street like that in the middle of the night. You just think it's it's it, unimaginable to think in real life how a situation like that, how these people cope. Yeah, well, yeah, it, 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 it would be more. To, and, and the thing is, well, like call you kind of hinted at with the with the homeless kid did did he really change that much i mean yeah i guess he you know gave the ten dollars to the other homeless person but i don't see that just means he's still just as homeless and poor as he was when the night started you know so we didn't really learn like why he was homeless in the first place or what's going to happen to him next like and, that kind of thing you know and, and i noticed he, he kept the snickers bar too but mm-hmm Yes. Yeah. And he, yeah. And I thought, oh God, he's definitely going to rob him and keep the money, you know, and, you know, there obviously something happens, but yeah, I was a bit worried. He was for a while that the, that Tariq would do something to the deaf blind guy, to Artie and like something really not nice for a second, you know, like take advantage of him or steal his bag or steal all his money. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, I suppose it's very hard in a short film to portray everything. Cause I think yeah. it was only, it was 18 minutes. So it was, it was very hard to kind of portray, so I had to kind of choose something to make it, to make it kind of satisfying in one way. And I find it an interesting story. Like I wasn't, I know there's left a lot of questions, but I wasn't like frustrated with the questions that left me. It just made me think and kind of made, made up my own mind kind of about the, the two guys and the two stories their their histories I, I like the scene i mean the spoiler alert now like, but where he where he did take some money from his wallet mm -hmm. because it, it sort of showed that that 
good people can do bad things and, and vice versa. Like everything's not black and white. Yeah, um, yeah. And definitely when he's in the shop, the shopkeeper, and the shopkeeper keeps staring at him. And because the shopkeeper thinks, oh God, Tariq is taking advantage of Artie. And because he does take out the money and then puts it in his own pocket. Um, but it's, it's just the shopkeeper doesn't do anything. He just stares at, at Tariq. Yeah, and I probably did a bit of people's reaction because yeah. you don't know who these people are. You know, you don't want to cause trouble for yourself late at night. You know? Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, like uh, uh, for me, it was very obvious that it was uh, an American film, in actual fact, from the USA, because like at that last scene, I mean, you, you've kind of touched on it a bit yourself already, more than it, that you know, you see him kind of purposefully purposefully walking away as if he's, he's he now has the, the impetus to, to change his life and and drag himself up by his bootstraps and you know make something of his life and fulfill the american dream sort of thing and and if he fails it's all his own fault like uh you know which is which is obviously like you know not necessarily possible for you know for everybody you know you could be you could be trapped in a situation and there's, there's no easy way out of it. So, uh, you know, that was, that was another kind of uh, team that I sort of graded with me a little bit. Yeah. 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 It's not like he walked around the corner and was suddenly like, Oh, look, I'm around the corner and this job's going to magically appear and hire me or, you know, my parents are going to call me and be like, Hey son, come back home. Or, you know, cause we don't know why he was homeless, any of that kind of stuff or his friends that he was texting earlier in their evening like, okay, I'm up. Come on over. Yeah. Yeah. Archie, it, did it say so he was on the d- a date or something? It said, um, yeah. Yeah. So that was interesting. Cause like, it, it's very, it must be very hard for a deaf blind person to form a relationship. You know, it's yeah, and you'd be worried someone would take advantage of that. Um, mm-hmm. so that was an interesting way to go. And I did love the way he he went through Tariq went through Artie's notebook, and that was a way to tell tell like that he that, that Artie was going on a or he went on a date or, or he's going on a date or um went on a date. yeah, he went, went, went on a date. So it was just an interesting a uh, narrative device to let the audience know where Artie was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, the thing with Artie that he looked very happy. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know, maybe his his life is better than than a lot of people. He seems yeah. he seems quite content. Mm-hmm. Uh, who knows? But uh, like I, I I presume he's he's used to 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 existing in the world the way he does, mm-hmm. and people help him. And uh, I guess the fact that he can write means he can read. He probably uses Braille. Uh, so maybe, like maybe he's he's quite fulfilled, you know, within his own sort of existence. You, know? you never know. Yeah, and there was one lovely moment where Tariq puts his hands over his ears just to see what it's like for Artie. So I just thought that was there's some lovely moments like that in it. Like I thought I, I know some of these films can be overly sentimental, but I didn't feel with this one it was. I really, really got sucked into it. And I just thought mm-hmm. On the surface, looked very simple, but it was very layered and very creative and clever. The way having two uh, two characters, how to get, how to communicate like that, because it is because if you, if you think about a deaf blind character and um, character who can hear and see, it's it like you, it would be a narrative dilemma to come up with how they communicate. But he obviously did a lot of research, and it's through his own experience of meeting a deaf blind person. As well, but it's it's a fascinating communicative device to write on his hand. I just thought that was really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did occur to me like, when he asked what time the next bus was. I thought, yeah, how's how is he going to tell? How? Him? Yeah, like you know, if you if you weren't doing your research and didn't contact the the or the center, the deaf blind center, it would, like you'd be thinking, how narratively would you solve this problem? You know what I mean. You'd be thinking for ages, like, but but it was just really interesting. I haven't seen that in a film before. What was the name of that shop, by the way, Milo, that you mentioned? Is what? there a, is that a chain store? You mentioned, is there something nearby? He wrote it. Was it? 
Yeah, bodega. I think it's just kind of slang for a uh, yeah, a shop that sells okay. or, you know, or it's not. It, I think it. I think I want to say it's like a Spanish. I think it's Spanish. To, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. it's Spanish, but it's basically yeah, it's just a small convenience store. If that was me, I would have written no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we wouldn't know the word. You know, yeah. but yeah, yeah it was interesting. Fill them over. Boom. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, especially because if he takes them to the bodega, you know, they're going to miss the bus kind of thing. So then he's stuck yeah. with them maybe a longer kind of thing. So I've been like, nope, just wait for your damn bus. Yeah. Okay. I'll get it for you. Yeah. You're lucky I'm being nice enough to, you know, take you to the bus stop anyways. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, rating time. Call. You want to go okay, first or you want me to? Uh, no, I'll go. Okay. okay. Uh, I, 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 I was surprised this film won so many awards and then I wasn't surprised at the same time. For me, there was nothing, there was nothing exceptional about it. Uh, it, was a, you know, it was an historian. And if, if, it had, if it had told, if it had concentrated more on the RT character and his, his life, uh, his story arc, say, I would have preferred it. So I will give it three stars. Yeah, I'm I'm with you, Carl. Actually, uh, I I feel like the black homeless kid was in there for the purpose of making sure you've got a black homeless kid in there, more so than that it really added to the story. Uh, I you know, but you know, maybe maybe that's that's just me. I mean, maybe. The fact that he was homeless helped justify the transition of the character or helped say something about why, you know, he helped him or, you know, there, there could be more to it than that. But yeah, yeah, I, I would have liked to hear more about the the actual blind and deaf guy. I think he's more interesting of a character. So I'm going to go three stars as well, actually. Okay. So for me, it's a, a deceptively simple narrative but with a lot of layers and I just thought I hadn't seen this on screen before. And I really like the fact that the writer director went and did a lot of research and space not his true, a real encounter. So he, I think he treated the actual topic with respect and came up with a really beautiful film that I find very moving. So for me, it's four stars. All right. Well, there we go. No budget audience. As always, you can let us know what you think on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at No Budget Show. We'll, of course, throw a link to this film into the notes so you can watch it and uh, let us know what you think. Send us the rage that Kahal and I gave it three stars instead of four or five, or send Claire the love for our yes. love in this film like <laughs> she does. And uh, with that, we'll say we'll see you next time. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.